$100,000. Flight academies promise you a pilot's life fast. On paper, it sounds like the perfect deal. Less training time, brand new planes, and a job offer in under 18 months. But behind those zero to hero dreams, a pilot mill is not selling proficiency. It is selling speed. And when money replaces skill, what happens when the systems fail and only your hands decide if you live or die? Here is what they never mentioned during the loan pitch. A recruiter slides the paperwork across the table with a smile that could sell anything. The pitch is smooth, airline ready in 12 months, 100% financing, all you have to do is sign. The brochure promises a jet, a uniform, and a seat in the cockpit before your next birthday. There is talk of a direct pathway to the airlines and a job offer waiting at the finish line. The only thing standing between you and the dream is a signature and a loan of $100,000. The numbers are buried in fine print, but the urgency is clear. Spots are limited. If you wait, you will miss the hiring wave. They do not say that entry-level pilots make $40,000 a year or that the loan payments will swallow half your paycheck. They do not mention 6 to 12% interest or the clause that ties your future to a certificate you have not even started. Instead, the recruiter leans in and promises, this is your ticket to the left seat. Parents sit at the kitchen table, running the math. The recruiter assures them that most students pay it off in a few years. Airlines are desperate. This is the fastest way in. The family worries, but the pressure is relentless. There is a countdown clock in every conversation, a fear that if you hesitate, someone else will take your place. The promise of a six-figure career drowns out the doubts. By the time the pen hits the paper, caution is gone. The dream is louder than the debt. You walk out with a loan bigger than most mortgages and a belief that you have bought a future in the sky. The system counts on that hope. It needs you to believe that money and speed are all it takes. The promise of speed is not just a sales pitch, it is baked into the regulations. The FAA Part 141 framework lets academies advertise a private pilot certificate in as little as 35 flight hours, shaving five hours off the traditional minimum. That difference may sound small, but in aviation, every hour is a lesson. The curriculum is designed for throughput, not reflection. Each student moves through a rigid syllabus, stamped and signed at every checkpoint, whether they have mastered the skill or just met the minimum. Schedules are packed tight, with ground school in the morning and back-to-back -back flights all afternoon. If weather cancels a lesson, a simulator fills the gap. There is no slack in the system because time is money and the academy's business model depends on volume. This is the assembly line. The goal is not to create the best pilot, it is to create the fastest one who can pass the test. The economics are clear. The more students who finish in the minimum time, the more loans get processed and the more seats open up for the next batch. The syllabus is not just about flying, it is about cash flow. The school needs you to move because every delay is a lost payment, every extra hour a threat to their margins. The system rewards speed, not depth. Instead of lingering on a tough maneuver or taking the time to build real confidence, students are nudged forward, sometimes before they are ready. The result is a certificate in your wallet, a debt on your back, and just enough hours to meet the letter of the law. But the difference between 35 hours and real proficiency can be the difference between handling a bad day in the cockpit and becoming another statistic. The machine keeps moving and you are expected to keep up. A new student sits behind the yoke of a $600,000 training aircraft. The screens glow with synthetic vision, digital checklists, and a magenta highway stretching across a moving map. From day one, the lesson is clear. Trust the displays. Eyes flicker between the GPS, the autopilot panel, and the engine gauges, all inside the cockpit. The outside world, the horizon, the subtle movement of clouds and trees fades into the background. This is not a skill picked up by accident. It is the habit the academy builds into every flight. The syllabus rewards precision with automation, not awareness of the world beyond the glass. Instructors, pressed for time, 
watch for button pushes and checklist calls. The student learns to chase numbers, not sensations. They can set a heading bug, program a direct to, and follow the magenta line with the same focus as a gamer following a quest marker. But when the screen glitches or the map freezes, the confidence drains away. Studies from NASA Ames show that pilots trained in glass cockpits take up to 20 times longer to recover from unexpected failures than those who learned by looking outside. The habit becomes a crutch, eyes locked inside, trusting automation to keep the airplane upright and on course. The more advanced the avionics, the easier it is to believe that flying is just another system to manage. But the airplane does not care about your screens, it only responds to hands, feet, and attention. And when the tech falters, there is no substitute for skill built the old-fashioned way by looking outside and actually flying the airplane. A brand new training aircraft slices through bumpy air, but the student barely notices. The autopilot trims out the jolts, smoothing turbulence before the pilot ever feels it. Synthetic stability masks little errors, wandering off altitude, drifting off heading, correcting them quietly in the background. On paper, the flight looks flawless. The student logs another lesson, convinced by the digital readouts that their skills are sharp. But the reality is hidden. The automation is doing the heavy lifting, ironing out mistakes before the pilot even recognizes they have made one. Flying in this environment, it is easy to believe you are improving. The numbers line up. The GPS track is straight. The approach is stable as long as the system is running. When the automation is stripped away, the cracks show. A sudden disconnect, a failed screen, and the pilot is left with a handful of airplane and no muscle memory for the basics. Years ago, a gusty crosswind landing would have forced a student to feel the airplane, to fight for control, to learn what it means to command an aircraft. Now the computer shields them from those lessons. Checkpoints and progress reports cannot catch what the automation conceals. The student passes the stage check, but the real test, the one with the autopilot off and the horizon tilted, never comes. The comfort of the glass cockpit breeds a quiet vulnerability. By the time the student faces a real emergency, it is too late to build instincts. The technology that promised safety and precision has in the wrong hands and at the wrong time bred a dangerous kind of confidence. A 22-year-old instructor sits in the right seat, clipboard balanced on his knee, watching the Hobbs meter tick. He finished his own training at this academy just six months ago. Now he is responsible for guiding new students through the same syllabus. One eye on the lesson, one eye on the clock. His logbook shows barely 400 hours. The industry calls him a certified flight instructor, but his real job is time building. Every lesson brings him closer to the magic number, 1,500 hours, the minimum for an airline job. Until then, he is stuck in the churn, teaching maneuvers he has barely mastered himself. The turnover is relentless. At the big academies, 70% of instructors leave within a year. It is a revolving door. The moment they hit their hours, they are gone, off to regional airlines, leaving their students in the hands of the next rookie. This is not mentorship, it is survival. The pay is just enough to cover rent and groceries, maybe a student loan payment if he is lucky. He is under pressure to keep students moving, to pass stage checks, to avoid becoming a bottleneck in the academy pipeline. If a student struggles, there is little time to slow down. The system does not reward patience, it rewards throughput. He wants to do right by his students, but the economics do not give him that luxury. Most days, he is just trying to keep up. He teaches what he was taught, the way he was taught it. Bad habits, shortcuts, and gaps in understanding get copied from one generation to the next. In the end, it is the blind leading the blind, each new instructor hoping the next flight brings him closer to escape. A student sits for the stage check, checklist in hand, nerves masked by the rhythm of rehearsed answers. The examiner glances at the paperwork before the engine is even started. Everything is measured, altitude, heading, airspeed, down to the decimal. 
The Academy's reputation rides on a number. 77% of students pass their check ride on the first try. That figure is not just a statistic, it is a business goal. Each successful check means another seat opens, another loan is processed, another notch in the throughput tally. Passing the test becomes the standard for competence. The syllabus is a choreography of maneuvers, each performed in sequence and signed off on a progress sheet. Students memorize flows, recite callouts, and tick boxes with the precision of a production line. The examiner's focus is on paperwork. Were the steps followed? Was the box checked? Did the lesson match the script? It is less about understanding and more about compliance. Feedback from examiners has shifted. Nearly half now say applicants are less prepared than those from five years ago. The difference is not always obvious on the score sheet, but it shows up in the cockpit when something goes off script. The system rewards the appearance of proficiency, not the substance. The real world is not a checklist. Emergencies do not wait for you to find the right page. As long as the paperwork is perfect, the machine keeps stamping out new pilots, ready on paper and untested where it counts. A regional jet simulator rocks in unexpected turbulence. The autopilot clicks off and the cockpit falls silent except for the warning chime. The mill grad, fresh from the academy pipeline, sits frozen. Hands hover over the controls, eyes darting across panels, searching for a fix that is not there. Seconds tick by, 15, 20, 45, before a trembling hand finally grips the yoke. By then, the airplane is out of trim, altitude lost, heading scattered. The Czech airman in the right seat waits, watching the clock and the sweat beating on the student's brow. This is not a rare event. It is a pattern. NASA's startle recovery studies found that pilots trained in glass cockpits, with automation as their safety net, can take up to 84 seconds to respond when things go sideways. Pilots who learn the basics by hand flying, eyes outside, recover in four seconds. The difference is not just academic. In a jet at cruise, 80 seconds of indecision means miles off course, hundreds of feet lost, and a scenario that can spiral. The simulator does not care about your certificates or your loan balance. It exposes muscle memory or the lack of it. The mill grad's training was built on managing systems and following scripts. When the script runs out, instinct is supposed to take over. Here, instinct stalls. Airline training departments report that academy graduates often need 50 to 100 extra hours of remedial hand flying before they are cleared for the line. Every minute frozen in the sim is a minute that could end badly in the real world. The stakes are not theoretical. They are measured in reaction times and recovery rates. The system that promised speed and certainty now leaves its product blinking in the dark, waiting for the automation to save them. But the only thing that matters now is who can actually fly the airplane. The loan statement sits on the counter, a monthly reminder of the bargain you made. $1,200 due every month, no matter what. The paycheck from your first airline job barely covers rent and groceries. There is no margin for error, no buffer for a slow month, no room to turn down a flight when you are sick or exhausted. The loan shapes every decision you make in the cockpit and out. Graduates from the pipeline talk about the pressure like a weight on their chest. One remembers eating instant noodles in a crowded crash pad, counting out dollars for gas, hoping the next trip will not get cancelled. Another recalls the dread of a maintenance delay. Every hour on the ground is money lost, but the loan company does not care about weather or scheduling mix-ups. The payment is due, on time, every time. For airlines, the cost does not end with the hiring bonus. Training departments now budget for extra simulator sessions, sometimes 50, even 100 hours, just to get new hires up to speed on skills they should have learned in flight school. That is tens of thousands of dollars spent on remediation, not advancement. It is not just a personal burden, it is a systemic drain felt across the industry. Debt changes behavior. It pushes young pilots to accept flights they should not, to skip meals and rest, to keep flying when their judgment says, stop. The risk is not abstract. Fatigue, distraction, and stress 
find their way into the cockpit. The system that promised a shortcut to the left seat has created a generation flying under the shadow of a loan, a risk multiplier that does not show up on any checklist. The true cost of the pilot mill is not just the interest rate, it is the safety margin eroded one payment at a time. Every year, thousands of new pilots enter cockpits with pristine resumes but shaky hands. As automation expands and airlines hunger for numbers over nuance, the real test is not passing a check ride. It is surviving the unknown. No amount of debt guarantees skill. The sky does not care about your credentials, it demands competence. Fly because you are ready, not because you are scheduled. Share your story below. Real experience matters here.